Ooh, in a second. Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to this webinar. If uh, anybody has any questions uh, in regard to hearing me or my co-host Neville speaking during this webinar, please just send us a message via the chat box and we will do our best to fix it for you. So in this webinar, we will be talking about charting instruments and uh, the channel. Uh, for those traders that don't already know, uh, the uh, channel is an old nickname that uh, traders uh, used to call the Euro uh, GBP uh, cross pair. So in this in this webinar, we'll be uh, focusing on the Euro GBP uh, cross pair, hence the name. So in this webinar, uh, myself and Neville uh, will be uh, showcasing the, the new uh, charting software available on the Active Trader platform. We'll be going over the broad range of instruments available to trade on this platform. We'll also be discussing trading the Euro GBP pair in the near term and also the key technical levels to watch and what Brexit or, or uh, uh, the delay of Brexit means uh, for this uh, important cross pair. So the, uh, ch the uh, topics on the agenda today we will be uh, discussing uh, how to use the Active Trader software, uh, the instruments available to trade on the platform, also the Euro uh, GBP pairs outlook, uh, the key levels, and uh, also how Brexit will affect this currency pair. I'm just going to uh, briefly introduce myself uh, before we go to the risk disclaimer. So if we can just get this slide up here. Uh, my name's uh, Nathan Batchelor. I'm a fundamental technical analyst. And um, I also uh, produced the Active Traders uh, Biggest Market Movers uh, series on YouTube uh, that some of you may have seen. And I also write a daily common uh, for uh, Active Trades. I previously have a background in uh, hedge fund trading and uh, I'm also a, um, a market analyst uh, uh, specifically in the foreign exchange field. So now I just pass it over to Neville who's going to introduce himself. Uh, good afternoon. Hello, uh, my name is Neville Hornsey and I'm a trader, intraday trader using the macros and fundamentals. I close out each day at the end of each tra trading session. Um, I mainly trade CFD FX majors and I'm currently trading the pound gen. Uh, so yeah, that's where I am. Uh, so yet yeah, these are the objectives that uh, we've already discussed for today. So now we're going to move on uh, to the uh, risk disclaimer uh, before we start going through the charting software. So if you could just please take a moment to read that uh, before the webinar begins. OK, so now I'm going to uh, hand things over to Neville and he's going to be talking you through how to use the Active Trader charting software. Cheers. And uh, so go over to here. All right. So hopefully you can see the Active Trader software. I'm just going to make this a little bit easier for me. Um, right. So we've been through quite a lot of the uh, elements to this uh, platform. I'm just going to close down. Uh, where we are currently and then add a new chart I'm gonna look for the UK 100 which is the FTSE cash index and there we go got a clean chart of something fresh uh, we're looking like we're going higher on all these indexes or indices all right so looking at what we can see uh, we can turn off the one-click trading we can turn on and off the grid so maybe that helps you or not uh, just to recap this is where the different uh, charting styles are I prefer the line charts or the um, full candles uh, so we'll keep it on candles because they're nice and bright you can see what I'm talking about uh, if you look to your left you've got the little arrow which opens up and closes the um, instruments down below from previous webinar you'll see that this is where our positions orders and history are and we can keep that down for now uh, at the top of this toolbar we've got the intraday uh, charting time frames and if you move across you get to see your crosshair which is useful for when you're looking for prices on your right hand side over here and your times 
at the bottom down here. So on the 16th of April, 11.20, or no, sorry, 11.30, uh, the opening price of the FTSE was 7.451 spot 1.6. And then you can see all the other bits to do with that candle there. Okay, turning off the crosshairs, uh, we went through all of the different um, indicators that are available in previous webinars. And we've also talked a little bit about um, these elements in here, which are basically your drawing tools. And I'm just gonna show a couple of tools that I find pretty useful. So if I am on a Sunday night looking around the charts, looking for a trade for possibly uh, that coming week, I'll look at the um, Forex calendar and I'll start marking off um, not only times and days but areas of interest and then as i'm looking at the charts maybe i'll notice some levels of support and resistance so if um i just pretend i've done that so i can say well um recent highs are up here and we're testing them currently i can use my uh, rectangle tool and uh, within that rectangle tool i can um define it as being resistance with red and maybe I'll add another um, indicator for myself, just a, like a little reminder that I'll be wanting to go uh, short or it's because it's a double top, maybe I'll put in two arrows. Um, so there you go, double top marked up. So when I come to the chart and I open it up for the first time on Monday morning, um, I know that I've done all my analysis and that I can see um, my current idea is to go short at the double top and then if i'm thinking about what could happen uh, maybe i'll use um, some more uh, drawing tools and then start drawing possible outcomes so maybe we break up above the resistance of the double top come down to test uh, what was resistance acting now as support and then we go up so yeah, it's just trying to plan out your trade ahead using the tools that are available. And uh, yeah, just making your life a little bit easier. So you've done your trade plan, you planned your week ahead or your day ahead or even your session ahead. Um, you've marked up key interest areas and these tools here are basically what they're for. So you can write yourself a little note we can say uh, as price finds double top and then that will stay on your chart forever until you uh, right click and say clear all drawings and then maybe some fundamental news comes out and you just decide to adjust your ideas saying well when this channel breaks if i make that a duplicate yeah man all right picked it up so yeah maybe um some fundamental news comes out which is a bit of a game changer we get a big um impulsive move down outside of this channel and then we plan the next trade so i don't use a lot of tools to be honest uh, the main ones are lines, uh, arrows. Uh, I like to draw with rectangles for zones. So I'd normally pick um, like a consolidation area like here and then stretch out to the right. And then, um, yeah, kind of work out, well, try and work out what's going on with the zone rather than a specific line. Wait for price action on the actual candles itself. Uh, what else we got in here down at the bottom you can measure so uh, with head and shoulders you can generally say that if um, actually I'll just clear this and start again see if we can find a head and shoulders okay so maybe an inverse head and shoulders so to mark out an inverse head and shoulders you could say use a dot duplicate that dot duplicate that dot all right so that's your personal way of drawing out a head and shoulders and at the bottom here 
you can then um, project what happens normally is um, the neckline. If I draw a neckline across that there, and then you can grab your, he says, grab your, come on. No, it doesn't want to pick up. Oh, I had it then. So I'm using this pen. All right, so yeah, when we break out the um, breakout of the neckline, you've previously measured from the, the head to the neckline, and then you can project out um, to where, look at that, it actually works. I swear I did not plan that, that was just off the cuff. There you go. So that's where your projection is. Uh, so yeah, that's how to use those drawing tools. Uh, I, I used to try and work out how to use GAN, or GAN uh, speed lines and things like that. But to be fair, um, I just use Fibonacci now and I mainly use uh, Fibonacci retrace. So um, depending on which time frame I'm on, it will depend where I use um, the start and end points. Um, actually, I'll just clear some of this off. It's a little bit laggy, it's all right. All right. So yeah, if I was, come back to me. Uh, might have a freeze. Come on. Yeah, Active Trade is frozen. Bear with me, I shall log back in. Uh, you still there, Nathan? Uh, hey, yep, I'm still, yep, I'm still here, <laughs> Nev, yep. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to... Yep, if you can please bear with us, everybody. We're just going to uh, refresh the charts. Well, it's more my... Uh... What is going on? It doesn't like me using the... Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm just going to have to log out, log back in. Don't suppose you're logged in, are you? Uh, I'm currently not. I've shut down everything off of off the off the back. Um, no, that's right. It just said it was um, somebody sure. else was using. Do, that's all. Sure. Do, do you want me to move on to the next section while you're doing that, Nev? Or uh, I'm nearly back in, to be honest. So sure. We'll give it two seconds and then sure. see if it works. All right, just loading up Active Trader. All right, slowly getting there, promise. No, we might have to move on. It's a uh, Active Trader is not working for me at the moment. Okay. I'm just going to move you over to. No. We will move on to. Maybe start talking about the euro pound. The second you can get the uh, euro GBP clear. Can you see the uh, the flags? Yeah. 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 Sure. So. Um, Everybody, one level's uh, sorting out the technical problems uh, with the platform. I'm just going to move on and uh, talk about the Euro uh, GBP pair. So, uh, first of all, I think uh, possibly the most interesting uh, part to talk about about this uh, cross pair is the upcoming events um, over, the, over the next uh, month or so that are going to start to affect this pair and 
it then becomes quite an interesting uh, cross pair on traders uh, radar. So if we have a look at the uh, near term and the upcoming events. So uh, yesterday uh, we had the announcement from EU members that the uh, uh, member states have agreed uh, to launch uh, negotiations on a trade deal with the United States in uh, hopes that this will will prevent uh, US uh, President uh, Donald Trump from uh, pressing ahead with uh, his uh, proposed uh, tariffs on car imports uh, into uh, the Eurozone. So that is something to uh, monitor because obviously this could uh, heavily affect uh, the Euro uh, because we see that uh, uh, German uh, cars uh, really make up a substantial uh, exports really make up a, a substantial amount of the economies of Italy, uh, Germany and France. So if we do see uh, tariffs on those cars, uh, they're obviously going to start to hit uh, profitability of the uh, main companies such as Volkswagen, BMW, uh, Mercedes, uh, Renault, uh, Peugeot and the like. And uh, not only will they start to hurt the uh, company's profits, but that could uh, potentially lead to uh, uh, we will see further unemployment across the Eurozone uh, potentially. And also we will see as well a further uh, slowdown of the Eurozone economy. So uh, with this in mind, uh, we should bear in mind that there's two possible angles to this trade. Uh, we should also uh, look at the positive side uh, just in case uh, we do get an agreement that could give the euro somewhat of a boost if we see that they uh, manage to uh, follow what's going along uh, with the Chinese model at the moment and after lengthy negotiations uh, they come in. So uh, potentially uh, we don't know how long this is going to last but it's it's very worth knowing that this is a backdrop that we're seeing on the euro and it's another reason why we're seeing uh, such pairs like the euro GBP and the British pound amongst other reasons uh, we're starting to see and then moving into quiet periods of consolidation because there's a lot of fundamentals going on in the backdrop. So that's really the first key term event uh, to know uh, when looking at this pair. Uh, then uh, we have, of course, uh, the uh, US Sino trade deal announcement. So uh, based on uh, past behavior, we could say that this could possibly give a boost to the euro currency and the pound uh, because uh, we've seen uh, uh, when positive developments have started to come out between uh, negotiations between uh, Washington and Beijing uh, uh, representatives, uh, we've seen that risk assets have got a boost. So we've seen that the likes of the Aussie, the euro and the pound have received a boost against uh, the yen and uh, the US dollar. So that's something to watch out for in the near term. We're currently seeing, if we look at the euro US dollar, for example, we're seeing that uh, trying to make headway through the 113 level is fighting up against a lot of resistance at the moment. And similarly, uh, the British pound is pretty much stagnant around the 131 level. So again, uh, this is another announcement that traders are waiting for. So once we get past this, uh, we also have uh, Brexit, which we're going to talk about in the next segment, uh, but that's obviously been delayed. So now uh, traders are starting to uh, uh, reassess uh, the UK data and we're having a look at the fundamental backdrop again uh, behind the United Kingdom. Uh, traders and investors are starting to focus on the underlying fundamentals of the UK economy as Brexit is put to one side. And there was some interesting news come out yesterday that uh, uh, stockpiling and uh, forward orders have been giving the UK economy a temporary boost. So what becomes, I think, the more interesting point here is now that that stockpiling has taken place, uh, we could potentially start to see UK deteriorate, um, UK data start to deteriorate uh, because uh, all the forward orders and the stockpiling have occurred ahead of the extension of, of Brexit. So it'll be interesting uh, to watch the UK data and obviously uh, I think that's going to be uh, primarily April and May uh, data uh, that will uh, start to show up if that temp if that boost was just temporary in the economic data that we've been seeing. So that's something also to bear in mind as well. Uh, on uh, May the 2nd, we have the first Bank of England meeting. So it'll be the first uh, policy meeting uh, for the Bank of England after Brexit was delayed until October the the. Uh, 31st. So it'll be interesting to see the Bank of England's assessment. And obviously, 
uh, we're seeing at the moment that the fundamentals behind the UK economy are much more bullish than the eurozone, uh, quite unbelievably, when you think about the backdrop of Brexit hanging over the UK economy. Uh, we're seeing that uh, the earnings in the UK are rising since their fastest pace since the financial crisis. And we're also seeing that um, unemployment uh, remains extremely low. And also inflation is pretty much not exactly hitting the Bank of England's target, but it's not too far off the Bank of England's target where uh, the ECB are currently missing uh, their inflationary target of uh, 2% or slightly above. They are uh, missing that quite widely at the moment. So uh, we can see that the uh, Bank of England meeting will give traders uh, a chance to have a look at the uh, Bank of England's assessment and whether they think that an interest rate hike might be appropriate uh, before Brexit. Again, I think they are going to be very much data dependent uh, when uh, deciding on that. Uh, so uh, from here, I think uh, the UK economy is going to start to come into focus again. And on May the 23rd, uh, we have the uh, UK polls for the EU elections, uh, uh, which I presume, unless uh, the deadlock is broken in Parliament. Uh, we're going to be take. Uh, we're going to be participating in, or at least the UK is going to be participating in. And many see this as a proxy for Brexit. So th that's something that's going to affect uh, the British pound. Either way, I, I think it's especially worth noting that during these elections, if we see that uh, the uh, polling is uh, for a more EU-friendly uh, uh, party. Uh, then that could potentially uh, start to, um, uh, you know, give an indication of what might happen in the uh, lead up to the October 31st date. And obviously, we'll be talking about the various scenarios uh, uh, later about uh, what could happen uh, before the October 31st uh, leave date for the United Kingdom. Uh, from here, uh, the uh, focus as we move towards the end of May is going to come back uh, towards the uh, Eurozone in a big way, in fact, because we have the European elections on May the 26th. Obviously, we're seeing the rise of some populist parties in the uh, European Union. And this is going to have an effect on the uh, Euro currency. And of course, um, it could be a precursor for um, uh, national elections as well. Uh, taking place in uh, various uh, nations coming up. So that could obviously affect the euro. So we should start to bear that in mind uh, when we uh, get uh, towards uh, the end of May. And obviously, again, I, I'd like to uh, say that the uh, euro across the board and the British pound across the board at the moment aren't very exciting because we've got this massive backdrop of a potential market moving events coming up. And then uh, we move to uh, the end of May and we move into the start of June and then we have on June the 6th the ECB uh, policy meeting and this is probably the most in policy this is uh, possibly the most important policy meeting of the year uh, because this is where we see the ECB uh, changing its economic projections and this is also a time where uh, the ECB have said that that they may start to act if the eurozone economy continues uh, to uh, start to falter and there is obviously uh, ch a chatter from uh, Mario Draghi, uh, the outgoing ECB president, that all available instruments are on the table in case ECB uh, policymakers uh, decide to act. So that's a, that is something to bear in mind. Uh, uh, June the 6th, that's going to be a pivotal date for the euro. And in the meantime, it's very much worth keeping your eye on the eurozone data because you, you then get an indication of what uh, might be occurring uh, during uh, that ECB policy meeting, uh, particularly uh, PMI data uh, coming from the Eurozone, unemployment data as well, and obviously what has transpired uh, between the EU and the US as far as trade no uh, negotiations in that time. I think as well, it's very much worth uh, noting that uh, the ECB President Mario Draghi is outgoing and does he, I think he leaves in October, unless um, I'm mistaken about that, about the exact month, but I believe it's October that he will be uh, leaving uh, the ECB as the uh, president. And I think it's uh, worth considering, will he want to bring in uh, more policy measures 
just before he's about to leave and it kind of signifies that during his time as ECB president, he's left the Eurozone in pretty much a bad state of affairs. I don't know whether he's going to do that. Uh, that might be quite a controversial statement on my behalf, but it's something uh, uh, worth noting. Will he let um, uh, somebody else take that on? So yes, uh, that's very much, much worth uh, considering. So that's the backdrop that we find ourselves uh, with this uh, currency pair. And obviously the euro and the GBP, uh, they are two uh, closely linked economies. And I think that the uh, central banks, uh, the Bank of England, I would say potentially is more hawkish uh, than the ECB because they would or are likely to raise interest rates before the ECB, uh, even though the ECB interest rate is obviously extremely uh, depressed. Uh, they they have scope uh, to move it higher. So uh, uh, we have a more hawkish uh, central bank in the ECB. And of course, uh, we have the UK economy currently outperforming uh, the uh, Eurozone across all indicators, really, from inflation uh, to uh, PMI. I think the services data is uh, probably slightly stronger in the in in the uh, German economy at the moment in the UK, but the uh, but the UK services sector slightly rebounding after a soft start to the year, and employment and wage data inflation as well um, uh, continues to improve. So uh, at the moment uh, we are seeing that the uh, euro currency is coming under pressure. Although at the moment uh, we're starting to consolidate and i think that brings me nicely to the uh, next uh, segment neville unless you've got anything to add of course on those points i've just discussed uh no no i was just listening in and uh yeah just uh looking through the charts as, as you're talking uh yeah sure but yeah sure yeah. Um, would you like to uh, uh go back to your um uh presentation yeah. on on the indicators would you like to restart that okay uh yeah go back to that uh, it sure, seems to be sure. uh, working. So, uh, sure. yeah, as you were talking about uh, the euro, um, yeah, the, the UK uh, stock market started to make a push higher. Good to hear. Uh, right. So, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, with the indicators that are left to talk about, uh, general talking, generally talking about what I do use is Fibonacci. And yeah, I've got one of those um, that we can put up here. So what would I normally do? I would normally wait for a high to be um, broken. So you know, you've got like um, a change in uh, trend and then I'd look for a pullback. So then I would put a, from the bottom to the top, of the move and then yeah to go along um that's what i normally do i i, I wait for a chain change in trend and then wait for a pullback and then that's where fibonacci comes in as an indicator for possible areas to uh, see a support um i don't necessarily keep the fibonacci on i normally would um mark up areas that i think are significant so here across the middle which is just above the 50 on this particular retracement there seems to be uh, an area where um, price would find support break through act as resistance and then you can see throughout the last month or so it's uh, been quite interesting and then if you look down to the 76.4 retracement um, that's kind of where the swing term was so that would be another um, area that I'd be waiting for down here. Uh, a lot of people will trade straight off the 61.8, um, but I normally would wait for some sort of price action where the, there's a clear rejection from a candle. But yeah, that's kind of how I use Fibonacci. It's, um, oh, please don't crash again. It's just been a bit laggy today. <laughs> yeah super slow All right uh any questions on that so far because that's kind of the end of the um the bits i wanted to say about using the tools yeah um just with the fibonacci um 
extension, I'd be interested to know uh, how you calculate that, Ned, with the Fibonacci extension. So I may or may not be a traditional Fibonacci person. I would essentially drop in the Fibonacci retracement, like I said, from the bottom of the move yeah. to the top of the move. Okay. And then that's your, your range. So the idea is that you have a pullback and then your expectation is that the trend continues. And for me, that would mean a range extension equal to itself. So I would... Oh, okay, sure, sure, yeah. So I would generally, if the platform will allow me... No, it's not going to... Essentially, I would add um, a line in, which would be on this platform, it would be minus one. Yeah. And that would make for a... Um, 100% move higher up to here. Well, if only I could show you. Now, for some reason, um, I think my internet is making this very slow. Okay, no worries. I think um, as well, I can see that the prices are potentially uh, frozen as well on the left-hand side. So, what? So from here, is there? Is there? Um, Another segment that you want to go to now? Yeah, so it'd be uh, generally talking about uh, the instruments that are available to trade. Um, I would normally say we would yeah, look into the uh, search element here and then you can type in your favorite uh, pairs and then add them to the watch list. Uh, what is available to view um, is generally uh, your Forex pairs that we've talked about, the majors, the minors, all the different crosses. Uh, you also have the opportunity to um, trade ETFs, uh, shares, indices, metals like gold, and uh, yeah, some um, options as well. So you've got the futures options, got the bobble. Uh, anyone that doesn't know what a bobble is, it's essentially a German... Um, German futures uh, bond, if I get the actual definition up, so I don't talk out of context. So a bubble is a futures contract that has an underlying asset basket of medium term German federal government issued bonds. And the bubble is an acronym for the German term Bunds obligation, which translates to a federal government bond. Uh, we can also trade ETFs. Um, so if I just, no, it's not going to let me, uh, yeah, the ETFs are exchange traded funds. Um, they're quite common now, uh, because you get multiple assets bundled into one little, uh, easy package, which generally would, uh, track, um, another indice or something like that. It says, uh, an ETF or exchange traded fund is a marketable security that tracks a stock index commodity bond or basket of assets. So you get ETFs in many, many things. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was going to say about all of that. Oh, I've done it now. All right, one last chance to see if I can show you how I would do it. <laughs> sure. No. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so I would put in something like minus one, but it won't let me. Yeah, on other platforms, you could put minus one, and that would uh, do essentially the same as sure. uh, Fibonacci extensions. So, yeah, you'd get something like sure yeah Something yeah like that. but yeah. uh yeah uh so yeah i'd be expecting a rise after this pullback on the cable i'd be looking up up there for one spot three three five as a potential trade uh yeah that's what i was going to talk about really sure um so from uh, so from here, I think we'll uh, look at the key technical levels, Neb, if you want to assist me with this. Yeah, well, fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 
uh, if we look at uh, the euro GBP pair on a daily time frame, uh, I put up uh, the uh, Ikimoko uh, indicator, and we can see uh, that the pair is basically it's uh, hitting some uh, strong technical uh, resistance at the moment. I previously mentioned that the 0 0.8640 uh, uh, level uh, was a key or a pivotal point for this uh, pair. So if we do start to see uh, any move above into the cloud, uh, we can see that we've got strong uh, technical resistance around the 0 0.87 level. And above that, uh, we've got the 200-day uh, uh, moving average which is currently located around the 0 0.88 level so those are the big levels to watch out for at the moment at the upside but at, at the moment um, as I previously mentioned uh, the upside is quite limited for these two pairs as we've got a lot of uh, economic and fundamental elements uh, that are going to start affecting so we're starting to see uh, this pair uh, consolidating uh, towards the lower end of its yearly price range so I'd also like to note that on the uh, daily time frame uh, there's some key levels to the downside that we should really start to uh, pay attention to. So if we do start to see that um, the uh, euro uh, starts to fall against the British pound, uh, we should uh, really start to look towards a 0 0.8440 level. And there's key trend line uh, support there. And if we do start to make our way underneath uh, that support, so uh, for example, uh, this scenario that I'd like to outline would be uh, technical uh, rejection basically from uh, from current levels or maybe slightly higher inside the cloud. If we do start to see a strong technical rejection and we start to move underneath this uh, 8440 level, then uh, this pair currently has scope uh, to move towards the 80 level. At the moment, it's quite difficult to see what would cause that to happen except if we had uh, some uh, developments around Brexit, because at the moment, I think the uh, the two, uh, uh, the euro and the British pound, uh, the two together, uh, traders are quite undecided as we are trading towards the bottom end of the range and we're currently waiting for that fundamental catalyst. So if we do start to drop, as you can see in front of us, uh, below the 84.40 level, look for a strong decline. Now, if we can have a look at the weekly time frame, um, I think, this is also uh, highlighting uh, what will happen uh, because you've got the 200 week moving average just uh, slightly below trend line support as well. Uh, that's indicating a large drop. And we can see uh, that at the moment uh, we are testing the Ikimoko uh, resistance line. And we can see as well uh, we're not really getting too far, although uh, we have so far uh, managed to trade above it for most of the week. So if we do move above there, again, Ikimoko analysis is kind of confirming uh, what we're seeing on the daily chart there, the weekly chart. Uh, we're looking at uh, potential moves uh, towards the 87 level. If we if we start to see uh, some bullishness uh, come, but at the moment, I think that the two Economy is really waiting for some fundamental drivers. Um, could I ask your thoughts on this uh, pair, Neville, as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, I generally trade the cable, so pound, dollar, and then um, look for the euro pound to do the opposite. Um, so at the moment, I am, I am, yes, yeah, sh short pound, dollar in my brain until we get some actual. Um, news so i would be thinking we go and test the weekly cloud if you're going to use yeah this particular you know once we get over the key yeah. turn yeah i would i would say that um for my personal view if we get above this like block here from this down move if we get above there and and we can stay above there at the end of this week then yeah that gives it a bit of a platform to go and test um you know the the resistance of the cloud yeah but that would mean um pound dollar would come down and yeah that i think that yeah that's, that's I think not that, yeah. it's not impossible is it because um it definitely feels it's, heavy yeah, <laughs> yeah I, so, I mean we've got a lot yeah it feels heavy and i think we've got a lot of fundamental news this week still from the uk but i don't know if too much was going to happen before the easter holidays that's my only concern but it's when it well, that's the thing with the 
liquidity drying up yeah you know become yeah. very thin market so if there is going to be a move um and um everyone's on holiday then um yeah maybe it'll be kind of a short sharp move out of this like little grind for the last how many days is that it's one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah it's like a week and a half um yeah if if everyone's gone on holiday for the easter break with their kids and stuff or you know just just away from the office to go and get some uh yeah rest from all this mayhem then uh, yeah we could maybe get like a swift sharp drop to the bottom of this sure. uh, swing um you know we're still long term since the beginning of the, the year it's from left to bottom left to top right so it's kind of a bullish chart but it doesn't feel bullish it it just yeah i'd agree there yeah 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 the last couple of months has just been sideways but it doesn't take a lot really for um this this to pop out and go down and especially if we're looking at the euro pound and that's sort of saying well the opposite which is what i kind of expect you know i could imagine a euro pound definitely going up to test the the cloud as, as some resistance just to sort of test it really just to see how strong that resistance is uh, before ultimately coming down sure yeah i'd i'd agree there and i'll also i think the uh 200 day moving average I, I don't think that's been properly tested yet as well so we might we might see that but yeah on the daily um yeah i guess if you weren't looking at the ikimoku uh resistance cloud here um yeah a lot of traders would be looking still for the 200 day moving average which is up sure. here in, in marked at 88 um that hasn't been tested since uh, the beginning of the year um yeah. well it wasn't tested when it broke through at the beginning of the year so yeah it, it would make sense that the euro pound would go up find out where uh, resistance is and at the same time uh, pound dollar would come down and just try and work out where support is and it would do that on a on a thin market definitely and then um yeah for well you're gonna talk about it later but the, the brexit news that comes out either way will you know the fundamentals will move this not i don't think the technicals will be the deciding factor i think the fundamentals will definitely override anything technical so if this does look like a an area of support if um the market doesn't like what happens in terms of the governments uh then in, that won't be support that'll just be a mini roadblock and it'll come a lot lower <laughs> sure. Sure. but then at the same, same time if the news is good then this becomes one massive inverse head and shoulders <laughs> and then yeah, we go yeah, super point. high yeah. so yeah. um i think that's what people are waiting for and it's you know the big moves will be you know possibly on thin markets or on definitive news so yeah we have to wait and see sure okay all right so we'll we will look at the um uh, the potential brexit scenarios because this is really going to be a key driver of uh, the pound in this uh, cross pair so we'll we'll quickly move on to that so so yeah so how brexit will affect this pair so uh, for me uh, you can see that i've got uh, some scenarios laid out here so we've got a brexit no deal so um that is obviously uh, going to be extremely uh, bearish uh, for the british pound and obviously uh, the uh, euro uh, gbp pair obviously the effects on the european economy are going to be quite bad but we can see that the british economy will probably take it on the chin a lot more in regards uh, economically in the initial stages and we will probably see that the uh, euro is going to gain some grade on, uh, gain some ground on the pound um, in regard to leave on the uh, 31st of October, at the moment, we are pretty much seeing complacency or fatigue in the market. So if that does happen, uh, we, we should expect this kind of uncertain uh, trading environment uh, with the British pound trading in, in a relatively narrow range until we start to get closer to that day. If Brexit gets cancelled, that's obviously extremely bullish for the British pound. And again, that kind of goes back to the uh, elections, uh, the upcoming EU elections. Uh, the Article uh, 50 getting ex extended potentially for another six months. I should think that's slightly bullish to more of the same of what we're seeing in regards to price action. 
and a uh, second uh, referendum, uh, I should think you will see very similar price action um, to what happened in the first uh, referendum result, if that does happen. Now, how about yourself, Neville? What, how are you uh, feeling about these uh, potential outcomes? It's just such an unknown, isn't it? I mean, that is the problem. I think markets, especially uh, ones that have been drug, drug, drag, dragged through the mud, like we have been, uh, just want yeah. some sort of idea of what's actually really going to happen. So sure. a Brexit no deal, I think uh, that just basically means uh, no official trading deal with the EU when we leave. So yeah, you can see that that'd be kind of a short, sharp, short, sharp shock to the British economy because people just expect the worst and then maybe or maybe not it would be that big a deal in the future. I mean, who knows? But um, yeah, that would be, an, Brexit no deal would be a short, sharp drop. But then leave on the 31st of October, would they really have had enough time to smooth the transition yeah, you know, yeah, enough? Yeah. But then at the same time, leaving on Brexit, no deal, leaving on the 31st of October, that's two um, definitive answers. So the markets can adjust, businesses can adjust, people can get on with their lives and start planning. So I think those two are kind of short, sharp shocks. Brexit cancelled, sounds like a great idea, but then you get political turmoil because it's, that would just be quite crazy for you know a party to lead you into Brexit and then just cancel it. So I don't know what happens politically then. That 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 would be kind of a new a new order of things, wouldn't it? Really, uh, sure. Article Fifty extended. That's just more of what we've been having. So that would just be a horrible grind and just news and news and news. A second referendum, I think, would be as uh, tumultuous, if that's such a word, as Brexit cancelled. I think a second referendum would be um, politically um, just really disruptive because half the population of Britain would be um, up in arms. The other half would be like jumping for joy. So <laughs> it's, you know, that sounds... But I don't know if business or government really care enough about what you know the people think until it comes to an election. So maybe a sure. second referendum a few years before a general election would be not so bad. But I don't know. I think the markets just want some certainty. So yeah, a short, sharp shock would be preferable for me. Yeah. Article 50 extended would be kind of, okay, it's just more of what we've had the last couple of years. Yeah, the Brexit cancelled and second referendum, it'd just be a complete unknown because I don't know if people would have faith in their polit politicians any more than they do now. So, yeah, sure. have to wait and see. Brilliant. Okay, so well, it's it's, that, yeah. it's out, of our, out of our hands, isn't it? So we will have to wait yeah. and see. Yeah. Okay, Nev. All right. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free. Uh, just to jot them down in the uh, chat section uh, before the webinar ends. I can't okay, well, yeah, um, well, on behalf of myself and Neville, uh, thank you very much for attending this webinar. Yep, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you very much.